Hello and congratulations, Chris. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's really, I'm really excited. It's really, I'm, we're really excited to have, to have won the award. So, Chris, let's talk about the radars first. Can you explain a little bit about the issue of dark vessels? It's a global problem. Um, it goes everything from, it covers everything from, you know, sort of high seas pirates that you once in a while see in the media, all the way down to, you know, just people breaking minor rules, even recreational fishers. Um, so it's, it's quite a widespread of issues. The, the radar idea really came from the fact that a lot of the agencies charged with this sort of, addressing this sort of problem, struggle with uh, getting access to data. Um, <clears throat> so uh, militaries around the world have satellites that track what vessels at sea are doing, um, but that information is all classified. So we had the idea that, well, there's all these ships running around the ocean and they all have navigation radars so they can avoid bumping into each other. Um, really, if we just made a little data logger that sat on the side of those ships' radars, and if they were willing to volunteer, we could basically just harvest the data off their radars and then assemble that up into something that would be usable across all the vessels and provide that to countries. And what it means is uh, a country like Ghana, um, who has fishing vessels operating in its waters, can actually use its own fishing vessels or their, or their kind of commercial shipping vessels or even recreational vessels and, and basically use those as sensor platforms at sea. And then we're talking to a couple big industrial shipping companies, one container ship company and one car carrier company. So they each have, you know, several hundred vessels that are moving around the ocean all the time. And that will mean essentially we'll have global real-time coverage. So we'll have radar everywhere all the time. And did you ever hear about the MH370? It was a Malaysian Airlines plane and it crashed in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And there was a, a huge search for it, right? So if we have this radar system running, we can just go into our database from all the container ships that have passed through that area and look to see if any of them have picked up a stationary metal object in the Indian and for no money, you know? They're just volunteering the data. But you also won an award for your um, other hat, as it were, yeah. um, which is which is the hydrophones. The work started out because uh, up in Southeast Asia, where we were working, uh, there's a real problem with people using explosives uh, for fishing. So yeah. first of all, can you explain what a hydrophone is? So... The most simple way to think of it is essentially an underwater microphone with a small computer that processes the sound. And then it has a satellite communication system so that it can then send a message that says, hey, I heard something of interest. And that could be an explosion from bomb fishing. It could be a vessel that's in an area where it shouldn't be. It could be someone turning on an air compressor, basically uh, diving in a way that they, that they shouldn't. So we've been deploying them. Um, South Africa, um, the Antarctic, we've used them a bit on the northern border here in Australia with the Indonesians um, in Niue in the Pacific. It's, it's really, it, it's fascinating. And presumably the sort of, the scale of it and scope of it is, is infinite. But what's your sort of hope if it, if it was, if you could sort of fantasize about the best, best scenario outcome, what would it be? You know, I feel like I got into science to do good things for the for the public, really. And so <clears throat> on a personal level, um, I'd like to see an end to illegal fishing. I'd like to see people able to find lost airplanes at sea. And so the whole idea behind that is to increase essentially access to information, um, you know, so that a country like Ghana uh, you know, can reasonably manage its marine resources and, and have a sustainable marine industry. Well, once again, Chris, thank you so much for your time and a huge congratulations for um, winning this award. And I'm, I'm really intrigued as to how both of these projects are going to pan out. So we'll be, we'll yeah. be following it and we'll hopefully revisit it at some stage in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And we really hope that all the people that read about it um, end up getting in touch.
we're we're super interested in seeing the stuff take off. So thanks a lot. <laughs>